Hello. Today we are looking at mitosis in the cell cycle. Right, so let's begin. Okay, so what is cell division? So cell division is when new cells are made by cell division of pre-existing cells. It is required for growth, healing, and replacing. In the last body, in the last minute, your body is probably made about three hundred million new red blood cells, twelve hundred thousand million new gut cells, and forty thousand million new skin cells. So let's have a look at the cell cycle, right? So there's a few things here. So we have mitosis, the M phase, cytokinesis, uh, G1 phase, the G0 cell cycle arrest, the S phase, and the G2. So I can see here the G1 is important in cellular com contents, excluding the chromosomes, are duplicated. G0 is where the cell cycle stops, the cell cycle is arrested. The S is where each of the 46 chromosomes is duplicated by the cells. And the G2 is where the cells double checks the duplication and duplicated chromosomes for errors making any needed repairs. So let's go into a bit further, right? So as I mentioned in previous stages, what they all do, the entire process of division of cells takes between 20 and 24 hours. The G1 phase takes about 11 hours, the S phase 8 hours, the G2 phase 4 hours, and the M phase 1 hour. So, how do cells know when to divide? So multicellular organisms divide only when one or more cells are needed by the organism. Cell division is stimulated by mitogens, which are extracellular signals from other cells, usually it's neighbouring cells. Over 50 proteins are known to act as mitogens. Mitogens act primarily by influencing a set of proteins which are involved in the restriction of progression through the cell cycle. So controlling the cell cycle. The cell cycle appears to be driven by specific chemical signals present in the cytoplasm. The sequential events of the cell cycle are directed by a distinct cell cycle control system, and this system is regulated by both internal and external controls. The cycle has specific checkpoints where the cell cycle stops until a go-ahead signal is received. Many signals registered at checkpoints come from cellular surveillance mechanisms within the cell, and these checkpoints also register signals from outside the cell. There are three important checkpoints that you must know, the G1, the G2 and the M phases. For many cells, the G1 checkpoint is the most important. This is because if a cell receives a go signal at the G2 checkpoint, it will usually complete the S, G2 and M phases and divide. If the cell does not receive the go-ahead signal, it will exit the cycle, switching into a non-dividing state, mentioned before, called the G0 phase. Cells will not begin anaphase until all chromosomes are properly attached to the spindle at the metaphase plate, which is known as the M checkpoint. This mechanism ensures that daughter cells have the correct number of chromosomes. So I can see here once again, the M checkpoint, the G1, the S, chip, the S, the G2. So the G2 checkpoint has DNA being replicated correctly. The G1 checkpoint, check that DNA is okay, check that the environment is good for division, check that there's enough resources. So what happens when you lose control of the cell cycle? The cell cycle is tightly controlled by hundreds of genes. Normal growth is a balance between the activity of genes that promote cell growth and those that suppress it. Cancer cells are cells that have gone wrong. They no longer respond to signals that control cellular growth and death. Some of these genes are called proto-oncogenes. They normally function to regulate cell division by stimulating cell division, inhibiting cell differentiation and stopping cell death. If these proto-oncogenes become mutated, they then change into oncogenes, which result in cancer. So looking at mitosis, I can see on the left-hand side, asexual reproduction, growth and development, tissue renewal. So in the unicellular organisms, division of one cell reproduces the entire organism. In multicellular eukaryotes, this depends on cell division for development from a fertilised egg, growth and repair, growth and repair. Most cell division results in two daughter cells with identical genetic information of DNA. The exception is meiosis, which will be our next video produced, a special type of division that can produce sperm and egg cells. All the DNA in a cell constitutes the cell's genome. A genome can consist of a single DNA molecule which is common in prokaryotic cells or a number of DNA molecules which is common in eukaryotic cells. DNA molecules in a cell are packaged into chromosomes. So in a cell, DNA does not exist alone, but exists with proteins that organise of its structure. These proteins are called histones, which are a group of basically positively charged proteins which 
form bobbins around which negatively de charged DNA can wrap. This DNA protein combination is called chromatin. So DNA plus protein is called chromatin. Chromatin then folds into chromosomes within cells. Every eukaryotic species has a characteristic number of chromosomes in each cell nucleus. So somatic cells are non-reproductive cells have two sets of chromosomes. Gametes, which are reproductive cells such as sperm and eggs, have half as many chromosomes as somatic cells. So DNA is replicated and then the chromosomes condense in preparation for cell division. Each duplicated chromosome has two sister chromatids, which are joined copies of the original chromosome attached along their lengths by cohesins. The centromere is a narrow waist of the duplicated chromosome where the two chromatids are mostly attached. So as you can see here, the centromere is present chromosome arm, chromosome is duplicated and in the end you get results of the separation of sister chromatids. So, stages of mitosis. The best way to remember this is I've got a wee anagram we can use, please please make me a T. Prophase, please. Prometaphase, please. Make, metaphase, anaphase, a, telophase, t. So, prophase. So you can see the early mitotic spindle here, the centromere, the two sister chromatids of one chromosome. You can see the G2 of interphase on the left hand side. So during prophase, the chromatin condenses and chromosomes become visible. These are highly organized structures and the mitotic spindle starts to form. The mitotic spindle is made of long proteins called microtubules which form at opposite ends of the cell. During the prometaphase, the nuclear envelope breaks down. This frees the chromosomes from the nucleus. The kinetochore forms around the centromere and kinetochore microtubules extend from the kinetochores. During metaphase, the chromosomes are aligned along the middle of the cell. This occurs as the kinetochore microtubules pull the chromosomes back and forth in a tug of war. This metaphase, the end phase, is an important checkpoint here for cell division. During anaphase, the sister chromatids are separated by the mitotic spindle and they are separated at the central mirrors. Each identical chromosome is then pulled to the opposite ends of the cell. And during telophase and cytokinesis, during telophase, a new nuclear envelope begins to form around the two sets of chromosomes. The chromosomes begin to unwind at the same time cytokinesis occurs. So cytokinesis is a separating of the cytoplasm to make two identical daughter cells. So I hope that's made this topic easier for you. So let's summarise what we learned about today. Cell cycle contains consists of interphase and mitosis. The interphase is G1, S and G2 phase, each of which have got a specific role. Mitosis has five stages, which is prophase, prometaphase, metaphase, anaphase and telophase. So in prophase, the chromosomes condense and mitotic spindle starts to form. In prometaphase, the nuclear envelope breaks down and forms a kinetic core. In metaphase, chromosomes are aligned in the middle of the cell. In anaphase, sister chromatids are separated. In telophase, a new nuclear envelope forms and through the chromosomes unwind. And the cytokinesis then occurs, which is splitting of the cytoplasm, resulting in formation of two identical daughter cells. That's the end of the video today. I hope you've had fun listening to this. Our next videos will be on mitosis, mitosis sorry. And after that, the lungs. So thank you very much for taking time to listen to this. Thank you. Bye-bye.